We're diving into the NL West this week, and we land on somewhat of a surprise second place finisher in the division last year. The Arizona Diamondbacks take over our team investigation series, and they're proving that there's more than one way to implement a rebuild. So 2017 was the prime contention year, 93 wins, a crazy wild card win over Colorado, and an NLDS loss to the Dodgers. They came back down to earth in a streaky 2018, which featured a 21 and 8 start, 125 days in first place, but then an 11 and 20 for finish to end up two games above 500 and that's when the winning window appeared to be over. Let the core player subtractions begin. Goodbye Patrick Corbin and AJ Pollock in free agency too and at that point they had just one contract year left at Paul Goldschmidt so they shipped the face of their franchise to St. Louis. Arizona also shed 53 million dollars when they paid down some of Zach Greinke's contract and they gave the rest of it to Houston at the trade deadline back in July. So you figure with that kind of talent loss, this is a bottom feeding team, right? Not really. They were only one and a half games out of a postseason spot through games played on September 7th of this past season. The D-backs actually ended up with four more wins than the year before. 85 total in 2019 where the little things stood out like the plus 112 defensive run save. That was second best in baseball plus 18.3 BSR calling them the best base running team in the game. The 105 ERA plus ranking 12th. 94 OPS plus on offense that slots them in a tie for 17th. That was a major accomplishment with a little magic involved. That magic started with Cattell Marte's offensive surge, a fourth place finish in National League MVP voting. He's in a team friendly contract. Option years can keep him in Arizona through 2024. Eduardo Escobar, 118 RBIs. He was a monster, still on the books at 7 mil per year for the next couple seasons. Nick Ahmed has been their defensive whiz for years. He put together a breakout season with the bat, really the only significant position player who's entering a walk year at this point for them. And they even weathered the storm of losing Paul Goldschmidt by replacing him with Christian Walker, who was almost his clone on offense. Look, two point difference and on base advantage, and that goes to Walker, and the identical slugging percentage. Add in the above average bat of Carson Kelly at catcher who was part of that Goldschmidt deal and the case becomes pretty legit for parting ways with their superstar first baseman as he appears to be in the decline phase of his career. So let's circle back to the unconventional rebuild going on here. 2017 playoffs competitive in 2018 and 2019 a minor league cover that was pretty empty a few years ago and now it features the second most top 100 prospects according to MLB pipeline that's pain free rebuilding right there and that strong prospect base comes from returns and trades like Granke and Goldschmidt successful international signings also having eight of the top 95 picks in this past amateur draft so can they keep the train moving forward in 2020? They're trying. They've been one of the most active teams of the offseason. Madison Bumgarner is the headliner. Five years, 85 million for a proven big game machine who has a lot of mileage on that arm, but he's also coming off a healthy above average season with his highest average fastball velocity and lowest walk rate since 2015. Plus he's a gamer with an epic track record. If you're playing in a winner go home wild card you're watching back his postseason highlights beforehand and you're feeling confident. They made another splash Monday since two Martes are better than one the D backs acquired about a four win player in Starling Marte from the Pirates demand center field and they have control of him for two seasons that gives manager Tori Lovello another power speed combo for the top of the lineup but also allows Cattell Marte to settle in more regularly at second base and that should take less of a toll on his body. He ended the season injured last year and this is where the farm system strength comes in. Yes they send back two teenage prospects with high upside but they're also high risk guys and the club was able to hold on tight to their top five according to MLB pipeline in their minor league system. In addition to Mad Bum and Starling Cole Calhoun replaces Adam Jones and he should be an upgrade on offense and especially on defense. They also tacked on a couple years for David Peralta who's now under contract through 2022. There's Steven Vogt for catching depth plus Hector Rondon and Junior Garrett for bullpen assistance. Their opening day starting rotation will only have one name that remains from the 2018 roster. That's Robbie Ray. He's been the subject of trade rumors since he's the other impact player that could walk after this season. Otherwise you have inning eaters. Mike Leake, Merrill Kelly, talented young recent trade acquisitions like Zach Gallen and Luke Weaver. At the top, they're banking on Mad Bum to bring that edge. His contract is by far the richest handed out during Mike Hazen's time as general manager. Don't forget to weigh their chances with their surroundings. The NL East and the NL Central appear to be more competitive divisions. That could give Arizona another chance to be a sneaky wildcard contender. They were in it last year. And this was how it played out last season. The Dodgers, the Kings by far. The Padres should be better this time around. The Giants are in their own mini rebuild. And the Rockies are coming off a turbulent season 
and off season. So the Diamondbacks look solid on paper, good enough to make wild card noise if some things go their way. And they built up a farm system that sets them up for another potential winning window soon after the last one closed. So you can call this script of building back up, John, much fan friendlier than the total teardown we, that we've seen from teams in the past, like Houston, Chicago, Baltimore's going through it right now. Arizona didn't have to go through those growing pains as a fan base, and that can mean something long term. Yeah, Scotty, that was a, a, just a wonderful presentation because that really is team building 101, what you just said there. I mean, you make trades, you get back young players, you get production, you sign free agents, you have the farm system going, look. These guys have threaded a very tough needle. It's very tough to thread the needle of what they're doing when you trade off, you know, again, a Goldschmidt, uh, a Grinky, uh, Corbin leaves for free agents. I mean, you're talking some marquee players off of good teams. They got good players back. Um, I, I think that they, they never took the eye off the ball, that they're never going to compete, you know, maybe in the Garrett Cole, those kind of $300 million deals. They're not that kind of a market. So I, I think that they looked, and, and again, I, I call it feel. You can have all the analytics and all the numbers in the world, and at some point, you got to have a feel for team building. you got to have a feel for, you know, where are we at? What can we do? And I, I, I think this front office, don't underestimate them. This is a very good group. This is a smart group. Uh, but it's a group, I think, that has a lot of feel. And I think it's evidenced by the way they've handled this. And I think there's a lot of excitement in Arizona and should be. I like this offseason for Arizona. One of my favorite offseasons.